Now, um, let's talk about the actual components. So here's one you can use on its own, but it's most commonly used um, as part of the package for CBT. This is the treatment to get rid of conditioned arousal. So if you have somebody who uh, gets in a bed and feels wide awake, or they, when they wake up in the night, let's say they just have to get up to go pee. They get up, they go pee, and they come back into bed and they're wide awake, that's conditioned arousal. So if you have that, and your so it means your bed is like eliciting this sort of um, um, arousal when you realize that you're awake in it, then we need to get rid of it. And the way to do that is um, you want to uh, increase the stimulus value of the bed for sleep. You want sleep to be under this, you want the, the bed and this time period um, to be um, under strict control and only sleep can occur uh, in this place during this time period. And the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to only be in bed when we are asleep or pretty close to it. And that's pretty important. So we're gonna only be in bed when we're asleep or pretty close to it. Now, as important as that is, as easy as that sounds, um, how, how would you do that? Um, right, you can't levitate up to the bedroom. So we, uh, Dick Bootson uh, is the originator of this treatment and he came up with several rules that work really well. So the first one is that we only go to bed when we're sleepy. Now this is very different with than most adults. So I, I usually start the first rule was what, what tells you to go to bed? And uh, in the last example, it was somebody who got sleepy, but generally speaking, it's not. So it's usually clock-based. Um, I don't know. Um, I finish Law and Order and then that's it. I go to bed. So it's like a habit. Um, I have I, I have a bedtime, so like no later than midnight. So usually there's things other than sleepiness. Um, if I've had a bad night, then I try and go to bed an hour earlier than I normally do. So we only want to go to bed when we're sleepy. And the reason why we want to do this is that um, we want to stack the deck and like it, um, stack the deck in favor of falling asleep quickly. If you're truly sleepy, then you should fall asleep quickly. Now, here's the trick. Um, what do I mean by sleepy? Because people with insomnia are tired all the time, but they're not sleepy a lot. Sleepy is the propensity to fall asleep quickly. So it's going to be important that when you are um, introducing this treatment, that you say, remember, I've got that weird definition of sleepiness, so it can't be tired because you're tired all the time. So for me, it means that you're that if given the opportunity, you would fall asleep quickly. Now, some people in some say, well, that, that's never the case. I would never, ever. And I said, really? So if I, I force you to stay up for three nights and kept you know, peeling your eyes open, that once I stopped peeling your eyes open, that your body wouldn't override everything and put you to sleep. Uh, well, under that circumstance, I'm like, okay, so maybe there's less extreme ones too. Is that, can we consider that? Um, so, Everyone will get sleepy. Sleepiness is not something that uh, is defective. Um, it's just that um, people with insomnia are coping with the insomnia symptoms and they have um, a particular system of sleep set up so that you're not going to get very sleepy. Okay, and we'll talk about what that means in a moment. So, sleepy for me is going to be. Um, finding yourself asleep, okay? So you're watching something and all of a sudden you're like, startle yourself awake. You were asleep. It means that you are sleepy, right? So that's probably a good sign to go up to bed. Um, your eyes are rolling back in your head. They're slowly shutting, right? Um, your head is cracking forward or back. You have to keep rereading the same page over and over again. Um, you, you've lost the plot, I mean, you probably fell asleep, um, of the thing that you were streaming. So sleepiness for us means that you would fall asleep really quickly, like under 10 minutes. So we're gonna wait. Now, some people will 
do that diligently, and that which means that they'll step a little bit later. Now, a bonus of that is that their balloon will be more full, and they'll be closer, they'll be further into the process of that alerting signal going down. That's not why you're doing it, but it's just an added bonus to the sleep systems. So, but rule number two is necessary because I want you to think of a really bad case of, um, of con conditioned arousal. They do what you've asked to do and they still wake up wide awake. That's gonna be a bit of a problem, right? So we need to have a rule for that. And the rule is going to be get up out of bed when they can't sleep. So if rule number two no, no longer applies, I was really sleepy, I got into bed, switch goes off and I'm wide awake or I'm like finding myself worrying or whatever, mentally alert, I'm no longer in a state that's compatible with sleep. Sleep is not forthcoming. So I'm gonna get up out of bed. So they are not to return to bed until they become sleepy again. So rule number one has to apply. Now, this is important because when they get out of bed, many therapists will say, oh, I get them to do something really boring. I think that is uh, so mean and unnecessary. Why do they have to do something boring? What were they doing before they got sleepy in the first place? Only boring stuff? No, most people were watching something they enjoyed. They were talking, they were reading, they were doing something enjoyable and they became sleepy. So we don't need to micromanage people's activities in the middle of the night. It also reinforces that we would be worried that they would become more alert. So if they say, what if I become more alert? I, oh, I love lean right into that one. What would happen if you became more alert? I want to know what the emergency is if you became more alert. If you became more alert, how does that necessarily mean that you wouldn't fall asleep even faster when you did initiate sleep than if that hadn't happened? Right? There's no control for that. So I want to know what people's experience is in that, in that moment. So when you ask somebody to get out of bed, you, there is only one purpose for getting out of bed, and that is they are awake. You don't want the bed to become paired with wakefulness. You want to get rid of that so that they don't have that operating in the background, right? Bed equals sleep. Bed does not equal tossing, turning, frustration, whatever it shouldn't. So they're going to leave the bed and go and do something uh, until sleepiness comes back. Typically, I'm going to ask people to do whatever it was that they were doing uh, before bed when they got sleepy. Uh, many people want me to give them a number of time, like how much time. Um, that's tricky because I don't want them to watch the clock. And many people with insomnia don't have a clock uh, in their room. Um, so it's really not about time. Now, sleepiness, one definition of sleepiness is falling asleep in under 10 minutes. So. I mean, Dick Bootson used to always say, if, if, if it's under, uh, if it's greater than 10 minutes, you should get up. And I, and I do agree. Um, but um, I don't want them to clock watch. And it is also a little perfectionistic because I would rather have a goal of falling asleep within a normal amount of time. So what I'm going to say is, um, as soon as you realize you are not sleepy, and sleepy is not compatible with worrying, any sort of cognitive activity, um, being frustrated, annoyed, um, I think there's a sound associated with when you should get up, and the sound sounds like, ugh, get up. You're, you're not gonna be going to bed anytime soon. And what should you do when you get out of bed? Something that's less miserable than tossing and turning, I think is a good, is a good goal. Um, so it's about 10 minutes is, is sort of the maximum. We're gonna ask them to get up at a consistent time each morning, irrespective of how they slept. The second part of the sentence has amnestic properties to it. People do not remember the irrespective of how you slept. So um, I'm just gonna emphasize that for a second. Why? Okay, so if it's supposed to be the, that sleep only happens during this time in this place, I can't control when you get sleepy, right? So this is a little bit, this might move a little bit. But I can control when you get up. And so, so we can try and control the window to some extent. So I can set an alarm here. And you can capitalize on a bad night. There is an advantage to a bad night. 
um, in that if you didn't get sleepy till here and then you still have to get up here, what is the effect on your balloon? Your balloon will be increased. So that means if you get up at this time and you don't lay in, then that gets rolled into your balloon, right? All that wakefulness. And so that night you are primed for recovery in terms of deep sleep. The only way that you wouldn't is if you slept in a little bit. So then that would get rid of, so not only did you have a bad night, but now you're, unfortunately, you're not able to recover the next night. So now it's a double, um, double damage. Um, we only want to use the bed and to some extent the bedroom for sleep if you really want this pairing to be um, powerful. Um, you can make sex the exception, it's up to the person. So there's always this assumption that sex makes you sleepy, which we, we know that it doesn't, especially for many people. Um, and so, and we don't want people to be using sex as like a sleeping pill. Um, it's not a particularly effective one anyway. Um, so if the person wants to make it an exception, fine. Um, I kind of like that because it's putting um, sex in the relationship above sleep, and people tend to overvalue sleep um, with insomnia. Um, if they don't want to make it the exception, then we can um, talk about ways to um, uh, talk to your partner about perhaps moving sex to a different time or a different room. And uh, lastly, um, we don't want people to be taking naps. If, if, if um, sleep only occurs during this place and this time, and we don't want to have like a little time out here. And naps take away from the homeostatic system. Again, that's not the purpose of stimulus control. It's only for the pairing. But we're leveraging the clock and we're leveraging the uh, homeostatic system.